So you out of here? Yeah, man, I gotta go. Gotta go. Hate to go. Great trip. Awesome trip. And it couldn't have ended any better. How was your fishing? How did it, oh, yeah. how did it go? You know, the overall, awesome. Your mosquito was just killer. I think the mosquito was, was the deal. It's, that's the one and only, really, that I had success with. It's a mosquito where the body is moose hair. That's right. a little different about it. It floats a little bit better, and uh, it's a little different than your average uh, mosquito out of the fly box at the shop. Right. Kind of thing. But yeah, that's a well, good Well, Von job. Wiley tie is always the best. Good little mayfly. Should I eat him? Mmm. Creamy. Yeah. First cast, I'm out there and uh, right off. Nice brown trout, beautiful brown trout. But I want a big rainbow too. Rainbows and browns, they're both really good looking fish in this lake. There's yeah. something about the way they grow, their, the colors and the spots. And, oh man. And uh, you know, even the kokanee. Even yeah. The kokanee are like really pretty, just super silvery and yeah. gorgeous. Very much so. It's a hell of a nymph. A uh, little beadhead number. Been fishing it for 20 years and it's probably the most effective nymph we fish out here. It's called a foot chopper. Why the foot chopper? Oh, there was a guy at the camp across the way. When he invented this fly, he got so excited uh, that that night, he, uh, when he was chopping wood, he put the ax right into his foot. Yeah, took seven stitches. He said. I guess the moral of the story is don't uh, chop wood in your uh, flip-flops. It's got a nice coppery bead, it bead on it and it's just, it's, it's a soft hackle and so it's kind of got the hairy things hanging off and it's kind of softy and they love it. Just. They don't have any trouble seeing it and it looks like a couple different kinds of bugs. The body is a couple strands of crystal chenille wrapped into a noodle of blended rabbit fur the natural and a lighter shade I call lilac. Ooh, sorry. This could be my big finish. You had the opportunity to catch probably the biggest rainbow you've ever caught in your life. Yet. Sure. So how did that go for you? Uh, you know, it went well. <laughs> yeah, it was a great finish though with that, with that rainbow. I was extremely excited and happy to, to get him on and get him in the net. We should just be honest about our campsite it was maybe not our top pick, was it? Yeah, it was, it was um, you know, it was close to the water, so that was nice, but it was like a three campsite commune. We could still listen to music and enjoy ourselves. We, yeah, we just listened didn't to really, it. Didn't really like oh, our thing. Little Feet, Graham Parson, John Hyatt. <sighs> hey, dude. What's going on? Ah, the Java. Java. What do you want to listen to? Let's listen to this Muddy Waiters. Ooh, Muddy Waiters, yeah. It's so cool to have a campsite just in the trees off the lake like this. Easy walk. It was good fishing last night, too. It was good. People get a little more yeah. like that. Hey man, I broke off a few flies last night. Maybe borrow a couple from you? Yeah, totally. Polina Peak looms above all the fishing water hereabouts. From the peak, one may view Polina Lake, the big obsidian flow created 1,300 years ago, and the rest of Newberry Caldera, the largest active volcano in the Cascade Range. That's East Lake in the upper middle. I think it's going to be a good one, Tim. Woo. Oh, I got that. Talking after a successful short stay on the water again. <laughs> Nicely done, man. Nicely done. Thank you. Right here. High five. Boom. And may I just say, East Lake, I love it. I think it's awesome. Well, okay. I just like the variety of experience you get with these fish. 
they're just beautiful. I mean, it was so fun to kind of get to know them and our view from above and Polina Peak and just everything was, it was a really great trip. I wanted to say that. Adios, amigo. Love you, baby.